that's what it was. It was not turned on. Thank God that happened on practice, apparently. Hello! Good morning! Good afternoon. Good night. And what we have today is ten of the most spookiest places on earth. At least from what this segment says, or this uh, interweb say. Uh, what about you? Well, I'm going to want to start off with the number 10, and then we're going to go switching back and forth till we hit the number 1. <laughs> so we'll share the experience of terror together. <laughs> that was scary. Oh man, I'm going to have to live with that now. <laughs> I... <coughs> All right, there it is. Oh, oh, you're trying to make this a ghost house, aren't you? It was unexplained creaking in the floors. Your ass, more than anything. Anyway. Oh, <coughs> so, no more. oh it's got some taste. No more chicken and whatever the hell you had. What was that? <laughs> gravy. Biscuits. <laughs> Biscuits and gravy. Number 10, The Riddle House. <sighs> the history. The Riddle House in Palm Beach County, Florida was originally a funeral parlor. The Victorian house was dismantled and rebuilt in yesteryear village at, on, at the South Florida Fairgrounds. In the 1920s, the house became privately owned by, the Carl, by Carl Riddle. The Terror. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> Joseph. How's it feel? How's that feel? Oh, okay. Joseph, one of the Riddler's former employees, committed suicide by hanging himself in the attic of the house. Joseph, for whatsoever reason, hated men and displayed his hatred by attacking men who entered the attic. Uh, one man had a lid flung at his head, and men are no longer allowed in the attic. Other places in the house are haunted as well, with furniture being frequently moved. If you were a ghost, what would you be? I'm thinking Casper. I mean, for me. I'm a friendly ghost. I would mess with people a lot. <laughs> I would, would you? Yeah. I mean, I would still mess with It'd them, be fun. but I would be a friendly ghost. Like, But then again, I guess if you're messing with them, they're probably not going to think you're a friendly ghost. Well, I wouldn't break their legs more than twice. At least, yeah, you got to try it once, right? Right. right. See if you like being malevolent or not. Each person. True. Next, we have for you the Hell Town. Or Helltown. Which number 10 I don't feel... I guess it seems more like a peculiar haunted house story, but hey. You know, it was haunted enough to make this list, so here we go. Well, number they, nine. they felt as though it was, yeah. yes. Number 9. In the north parts of the Summit County in Ohio is known by the eerily blunt monocure Helltown in the 70s. Boston Township was the site of the government buyout and a subsequent mass eviction of citizens. Does that make you happy now? No, because it's subsequent. Son of a bitch! I tried. <laughs> the houses were intended to be torn down. Right. <laughs> yeah. The houses were meant to be torn down for a national park, but never really made it there. Or quite manifested. <laughs> Legends bonded wildly, and who can blame them? Because the legend mongers drive, driving through the dark wooded landscape was enough to give you chills, even when it was populated, let alone when you have to drive by boarded up homes standing next to burnt down ones, or hulks <laughs> of others. Uh, and the local fire department actually used some of those buildings to use for pra practice. Because they're dicks. The terror! The terror! Give us the head. The terror! If you like terror, like our videos. Oh, there you go. Ah, you better believe it. <laughs> Whether based on a kernel of truth or cooked up in the heads of created visitors, the persistent legend of Helltown added to the creep factor. The steep Stanford Road drop-off immediately followed by a dead end is aptly named the end of the world. Oh, I itch. Oh, I, I thought maybe you are going to, you know, put a little more to it. The end of the world. It's the end of the world as we know it. We do 
not own that. No, we don't. Go ahead. Uh, where am I? <laughs> yeah. uh, you get, if you get... What'd you do? You broke it. Okay. <laughs> if you get stuck at the e at this dead end for too long, accordingly to ghost story enthusiasts, you may meet your end at the hands of many members of the endless parade of freaks patrolling the woods. Satanist Ku Klux Klan members. I'm getting to it if you just let me. <laughs> An escaped mental patient and... Abnormally large snake. Abnormally large snake. I wonder if it's a boa somewhat. Uh, and mutants caused by an alleged chemical spill proudly march in this area parade. Wait, I just read that, did I? March in this parade. Oh, okay, yeah. Whatever. And if you stray from the roads, you may find Boston. I knew you were going for it. No, you didn't. You may find Boston Cemetery, home to ghostly man, ghostly man, grave robbers, and... I think I would say ghostly men's. A ghost. It says home to a oh, ghostly Oh, okay, there's man. an A. I, I skipped the A. I don't see A's. I'm just saying. How'd you say I man? Just, I how'd just see IOUs. Man? I just see say, IOUs. How'd you say man? I see E-I-O-Us. Or, or grave. You would say grave. Um, they're called mm, and... <laughs> Grave robbers. And the quirkiest of all, a moving tree. What? Beware. That'd be creeping me out, I think. Heck yeah. The moving tree. Although I would be interested to go up and kick it and see what would happen. Like Lord of the Rings all over again. Ah, Frodo, huh? Your yeah. turn. Number oh. eight. Number eight. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you count? He can count. Next. Number eight is the Stoll Cemetery. Whoa. Stoll. The history. Which we'll leave these in the links below, just so you know. Yes. Stoll, Kansas is a tiny, unincorporated town in bumfuck nowhere. <laughs> er, pardon. <laughs> Douglas County. Pardon the F. Uh, ten miles west of Lawrence. In, uh, and 13 miles east of Topeka puts it far from anything resembling Topeka. a... Far from anything... Topeka. Sorry. Far from anything resembling a large population center. The population of Stoll is approximately 20 people, but don't let it, the deceptively quaint really? village fool you. A darker side okay. lurks behind the bushes and in the shadows. Okay. I'm listening. Oh, I'm glad, you, I'm glad you got the big one. The terror! The terror! My face! Okay. The terror! <laughs> In the 20th century, two tragedies rocked the tiny settlement. Please observe, these are not legend or these are not legend or folklore, but fact. First, a father finished burning a farm field only to find the charred corpses of his young son in the aftermath. The second incident occurs when a man or occurs was a man went missing and was later found hanging from a tree. As far as legend goes, the infamous cemetery is where you can find your fill of supernatural lore. Oh yeah. The book Weird US has this to say about Stoll Cemetery. There are graveyards across America that go beyond merely being haunted and enter the realm of the diabolical. There are places so terrifying that they say the devil himself holds courts with his worshippers there. The cemetery of Emmanuel Hill in Stoll, Kansas is one of these places. Rumors exist stating that Stoll Cemetery is one of the seven gateways to hell. While the old church is now demolished, many attempt to sneak in at night for a peek of unsavory goings on. But be warned, the police patrol heavily, especially on Halloween and spring equinox. The place is supposed to be so unholy, in fact, that some claim Pope John Paul II refused to allow his plane to fly over eastern Kansas on his way huh. to an appearance in Colorado. The validity of this last claim is up for debate, but, no, uh, but none can deny the legends or not. Stoll Cemetery is a terrifying place to be. Well, he's the Pope. 
He, 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 he's, he knows when something's bad, right? I mean, come on, he's the Pope. But then again, if you don't believe in the Pope and you think otherwise, you know, he could think that he's... The Pope exists. I know he's oh, out he there. exists. I know yeah, he's out there. How powerful he really is. He doesn't have power. Know how he just has the ability to talk to Jesus. To oh, Jesus! I'm standing. What are you doing? I'm standing. Your penis is on the screen, just so you know. I'm sitting. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, I just sat myself. You just shat yourself. I sat myself. You sat yourself? I sat myself. You did not just do it again. I, no, I just sat myself. Oh, okay. oh, man, I'm stretchy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I'm stretchy. I'm sly. I'm sly. Ooh, okay. The Ridges is number seven. The The, the Ridges. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. The history. <laughs> Originally known as the Athens Lunatic Asylum. The Ridges was renamed after the state. <laughs> Sorry. The state Ohio acquired the property. Uh, the hospital saw hundreds of lobotomies and often declared master masturbation. And epilepsy to be the cause of insanity in patients. <laughs> I'm just nuts. I'm just, um, I kind of want to go there because I'm going to see, I'm hoping to see a lot of ghosts just tugging away. Oh my gosh. I know you want to go there because that, that's probably what's going to happen there. <laughs> I just, oh, what the hell is that ghost doing? <laughs> that's why they make the sounds. <laughs> The terror! The terror! It's a tiny one. The terror! Athens, Ohio is listed as the 13th most haunted places in the world. Oh. As per the British Society of Psychical, Psychical Research. Yeah. Psycho research. Yeah. The nearby Ohio University, which currently owns most of the property on which the Ridges Ridges is located. Huh? What are we Shush! Quit reading! That's just dickish. Dickish. Is said to be heavily haunted. A notorious rapist with dis dissociative. Dis this, I will get it one of these times. Well, well you'll but anyway, the <laughs> you're right. The Dissociative <laughs> Identity Disorder. Billy Milligan, 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 was housed at the facility for years. The most famous story, however, is of the 54-year-old female patient who ran away and was missing for six weeks. She was found dead in an unused ward. She... Oh, I thought you were doing something besides that. But anyway, where to where go? Uh, <laughs> she had taken off all her clothes, neatly folded them, and laid them down on the cold concrete where she subsequently died. Through a combination of decomposition and sun exposure, her corpse left a permanent stain on the floor, which is still visible today. Her whoa. spirit now haunts the abandoned ward. Wow, that's crazy. That seems to be pretty cool and interesting to go and find out. Um, I'm hoping that they have some like pictures or something like here in there. I think they do. I think um, there's a video I mean, there's there. a video here on the link whenever you check it out. Well, we should definitely watch that. Uh, heck yeah, buddy. Uh, but now, we have Humberstone and Lenoria. Lenoria. Well, we're gonna go to Humberstone and Lenoria now. So, in our minds, <laughs> the history. These two abandoned mining towns in Chile were recently featured on an episode of the Sci Fi Channel's show Destination Truth. In ah, okay. 1872, the town was founded by, or founded as a saltpeter mine, and business ah. and business boomed. However, after several heavy blows, including the Great Depression, the business declined, and the collapse in 1958 in the town of Humberstone and its surrounding towns were abandoned by 1960. Treatment of workers in both towns bordered on slavery, 
And now the towns are left standing derelict. Derelicts. Derelicts. Derelicts? The Daleks. Doctor Who! Oh, anyway, go on. The Terror. The Terror! Okay. I was in terror! Hey. <laughs> It's rumored that the dead of the Lenoria Cemetery rise at night and walk around the town. Oh, that's that's, that's interesting. That'd and cool. ghostly images frequently show up in photographs in Humberstone. 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 These Humberstone. towns are so terrifying, Humberstone. the residents of nearby Enquiqu refuse to enter them. The former <laughs> residents never leave and can be seen walking around and children have been heard playing. The cemetery of Lenoria, uh, regardless of whether its occupants actually walk at night, contains open graves where the bodies are fully exposed, leaving you to wonder why it is, or leaving you to wonder why, is it the is it ghosts or is it grave robbers? As if either prospect is very appealing. You know that it is. That's awesome. I would love to go see some night walkers and do some grave robbing. You know that. I would never rob the graves. graves. But there are the graves next to the graves. Right. The crypts. <laughs> the crypts are where all the money is. Exactly. Rich people had the had the stone <coughs> had, had the good shit. Yeah. We want the good stuff. Give me your goods. Now we're going on to <laughs> Yeah, a little bit of, you know asbestos. Corpse old dust in your uh, in your in your fruit. Uh, Byberry Mental Asylum. The history. The history. <laughs> the history. The history. You started with the. Okay, all right. The history. Tomorrow. Is. Today. Tomorrow. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Philadelphia, the Philadelphia State, State Hospital. Oh. Uh, Shut up! I thought we were doing this together. No! Oh, okay. I'm done with you, like. Don't hold it up. Put it down. Put it the down. Philadelphia State <laughs> Hospital at Byberry, or known simply as Byberry, you have to be by yourself looking at yourself. Now, how does that make you feel? Very uncomfortable. I'm, I'm, I'm okay looking at myself right now. <laughs> ah, so beautiful. <laughs> well, I can't really see me from here. The hospital, in its most popular form, we found, we founded, or yeah, we was founded in 1907 <laughs> and known as the Byberry Mental Inst hospital. It exceeds its patient limit quickly, maximizing, maximizing, maxim, maxing, 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 maxing out over 7,000 in 1960. It housed everything from mentally challenging to criminally insane due to its atrocious conditions and the subhuman treatment of its patients. The hospital was closed and abandoned in the 1990s. It had since become a nuisance for the neighbors and it was a breeding ground for Mice. vandals, arsonists, satanists, and urbanists. Satanists. No, urban, ex urban explorers. It was demolished in 2006 in spite of the fear of spreading asbestos yes. which is, you know, it's scary standing itself. for 16 years. Uh, now, we're moving on. The terror! The terror. <laughs> All right. The terrifying aspects of this location, you're not looking. Good. <laughs> Is it so much it's, it's haunted or the unsavory characters, you son of a bitch, that lurk after dark, although you would have been wise to be wary of both while exploring the building. The terror here comes from the fact that <coughs> that the ha uh, that, uh, from, from the facts of the how the hospital was run. Human excrement lining the hallways, which was also where many patients slept. The staff was abusive and frequently exploits and Harasses patients. It's like a modern-day nursing home. Probably. Pretty, sounds pretty familiar. 
Uh, one patient had a tooth pulled without Novocaine, while another's, well, another killed and dismembered a female patient. Ooh. Although the killer, Charles Gable, was never found. Charles Gable. 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 Gable, shut up. You, you can tell us what it is when you read it. But anyway, was never found. <laughs> the victim's bodies was found strewn across the property. Uh, her teeth were found being played <laughs> with by another patient. Man. God, Even as the hospital was in the process of closing, two released patients were found dead in Delaware River. Two successive uh, days after their release, perhaps the gate in the Stoll Cemetery opens here. Stoll Cemetery. Didn't you just talk about Stoll Cemetery? Yeah, I guess they're linked. Wow, that's pretty cool. Next, number four. Aww. Oh. <laughs> Leap the Castle. I just found out you get to do number one. Do you? No, you I'm amazing. Know. Whoops. Oh, he's gonna play it. Nope. It's working on it. No, I paused it. Okay. Leap Castle, number four. The history. Whoa. Oh, that, was a, that was creepy. <laughs> it's a ghost! There you go. The history. While the Irish Castle is perhaps the most popular location featured on this list, it is, uh, it is worth recapping the long and often gruesome history. Although it was built by the O'Bannons in the late... 15th century, the castle was taken over by the ruling of O'Carrolls, or O'Carrolls, uh, to whom the O'Bannons were subject. After the death of Mulroney O'Carroll, a fierce rivalry erupted, culminating in two brothers struggling for control. One of the brothers, a priest, was brutally murdered in his own chapel in front of the family by the other brother. Uh, this chapel is now known as the Bloody Chapel for obvious reasons. Many people were held prisoner Bloody. and even executed at the castle. The Terror. The Terror. The castle is rumored to be haunted by a vast number of spirits, including a violent hunched beast known as, as the Elemental. The Notre Dame. It is most recognizable you know it. by the accompanying smell of rotting flesh and sulfur, while renovating the castle, workers discovered the Oblite, which is a dungeon accessible only through the ceiling hatch, into which prisoners were thrown, then forgotten and left to die. This particular Oblite contained three cartloads of human remains and was filled with spikes to impale those thrown into its depths. I, I kind of want to go there. Well, that sounds pretty cool, too. I definitely would like to see an elemental, that's for sure. Heck yeah, dude. Like, well, I mean, unless it's coming after me to elementally kill me. Kill your flesh. Yes. Yeah, um, I, I was going to go with a different word, but I'd rather not at this moment. Right. No, no. Well, it, that could have been it, but. No, no uh, what are we at? Number three? Number three is Shades of Death Road. You heard him. You heard him say it. Shades of death. Shades of death. Almost like shades of gray. Jesus God, this thing's hit long. Anyway, the there's history. A, there's a lot of history. I won't read it. Just go. <laughs> you don't have to hold it. This New Jersey road winds through seven miles of countryside, and along that stretch, it gives us no definition, or no de no definitive clues as to the origins of the eerie name. For those wondering, Shades of Death is not a nickname given by locals, but it is, in fact, the road's official moniker. While the explanation of this highly unusual name has been lost, many theories around or abound. Uh, some say that the murderous highwaymen would rob and kill those along the roadside. Others say that the reason was because of violent relations by the locals against the very same highwaymen, uh, resulting in their lynching, lynching them, being hung up in a, as a warning. Some attribute it to three murders that occurred in the 20s and 30s. 
The first murder saw a robber beating his victim over the head with a tire iron. Sounds painful. And the second saw a woman decapitated. Oh, she she, she uh, saw a woman decapitate her husband and bury the head and body on separate sides of the road. So uh, why'd the corpse cross the road? <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Die on the other side to get his head. <laughs> Aha, uh -huh. uh -huh, because he lost <laughs> on the other On the other side. Uh, let's see here. Uh, and the third consists of poor Bill Cummins being shot and buried in a mud pile. Some attribute it to a mass amounts of fatal car crashes, while others consider it the fault of vicious wildcats from nearby Bear Swamp. Bear swamp. Figured there'd be bears there, not wildcats. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's called bear swamp. How can you call it something that's not there? It's apparently? because the wildcats set it up, and so that you think there are bears, bears, and then so you won't expect there to be wildcats. The most likely ex explanation, however, is that the... Malaria bearing mosquitoes. Is it malaria? Yep. Bearing mosquitoes. Oh, okay, yeah. I... <laughs> Terrorized the locals years to years, year to year, sorry, and the remoteness of the area prevented good medical attention from being promote, prominent in the area. This is supported by the fact that in 1884, most of the swamps in the area were drained. So, because they were drained and very little lakes and whatnot, or like little puddles of water would like house the mosquitoes and come all over the place. Yes. Kind of like what happens after the uh, the hurricanes and stuff like that. Um, the terror. Terror. Uh, terror. 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 Gruesome history and spooky names aside, you have much to fear along this byway. South of the one I-80 uh, I overpass lies an official unnamed lake. Should we name it? We'll tell you it's called Ghost Lake. Mm. I was thinking, uh... Oh. Nothing. I know. <laughs> yeah, I thought nothing. so. <laughs> the, the most we'll tell you is called Ghost Lake. You son of a bitch. You read further. What? It's what it's called, Ghost Lake. Oh, yeah. You you read further. <laughs> That's what it was supposed to say. Ah, I thought you just made that up. You lied to me. I didn't say I made it up. <laughs> This lake is frequently <laughs> the home of spectacular, specter-like vapors, and the sky is supposed to be unusually bright. No matter what time of the night you are here, there, as per the name goes <laughs> of the high waymans, victims roam the area, and they are most frequently frequent in the abandoned cabin across the lake. The dead end road known as Lenape, Lenape Lane is home to thick fog and apparitions. You may be chased off the road by a white light. I'll let Wikipedia details, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, thank you. One day during the 1990s, some visitors found hundreds of polar Polaroid... I was going to say polarized. I was like, polarized? Pho photographs scattered in the woods just off the road. They took some and shared them in, uh, shared them with Weird NJ. New Jersey? Okay. Which published a few as samples. Most of the disturbing images showed a television changing channels. Others showed a woman or woman buried and somewhat difficult to identify lying on some sort of metal object. Conscious, but not smiling. Okay. okay. Local police began a investigation after the magazine ran an item with the photos. But the reminder disappeared. Yeah, the, rem the remainder disappeared uh, shortly afterwards. So... What do you think? Aliens. Mm. 
Come on. Quick, quick, bright lights. Quick to go to aliens. Bright lights. Metal floors. S not smiling. I'm gonna go with gnomes. Not smiling. It's aliens. Gnomes. Aliens don't smile. They don't like you. Gnomes, they don't smile either. They just take your underpants. Next. <laughs> All right. So next we have Tool Slang Genocide Museum. Ah, sounds eerie. Sounds and Asian. <laughs> what? <laughs> sounds Vietnamese or something, man. Eh, you know, Orient. The his. <laughs> the <What>? history. <laughs> Welcome. To Phnom Penh, Cambodia, home of the Tool Slang Genocide Museum. This former high Why school. This former high school was converted in 1975 to secure prison, to secure prison, 21 by Khmer Rouge. The prison was used as a base. Of to torture and murder prisoners. Most of the prisoners were former soldiers and government officials from the Lon Nol Regiment. Kumar Rogue? Rogue? Kumar Rogue? I don't, I don't really care. Kumar. Like Kumar, you know? Yeah, sure. Kumar Road. Rogue. Rogue. Uh, use the base to torture and murder prisoners and prisoners of former soldiers and government officials. The Lenore Regiment. <laughs> the Lon Nol Regiment. <laughs> However, the Kumar Rogue leaders par uh, Paranoia soon caught up with them, and they began shipping people from their own ranks to the prison. Many prisoners were tortured and tricked into naming their families and associates, who were also arrested and tortured and murdered. So they were Shanghai, basically. Basically. The terror. What can you say? It's cheaper. The terror. The ghosts of the estimated 17,000 victims of Toll Sling continue to roam the halls, and odd happenings around the place often attribute to them. And this isn't hard to see why. Most were forced to confess their crimes they did not actually commit, although most victims were Cambodians. Many foreigners fell victim to the death machine, including Americans, French, a New Zealander, a Briton, Australians, Arabs, Indians, Pakistanis, and Vietnamese. Only 12 people are thought to have survived. To close the entry on the sad story, I'll leave you with the actual security regulations. The 10 rules all prisoners had to abide by. All imperfect grammar is set in context due to poor translation. You must answer accordingly to my question. This is number one. You must answer according to my question. Don't turn them away. Number two, Whoa. don't try and hide the facts by making pretext this and that. You are strictly prohibited to contest me. It's like this and like that and this and that. It's like three, that. Oh. don't be a fool for you are a chap who dare to thwart the revolution. Uh, number four, uh, you must immediately answer my question without wasting time to reflect. Five, don't tell me about your immoralities or the essence of the revolution. Six, while you're getting lashes or electrification, uh, electrification? Electrification. You must not cry at all. Number well, seven, sometimes I like to cry when do I'm nothing. electrified. <laughs> Number seven, do nothing, sit still, and wait for my orders. If there are no orders, keep quiet. When I ask you to do something, you must do it right away without protesting. Uh, don't make pretext, number eight, don't make pretext about Kampucha Krom in order to hide your secret or, or traitor. Nine, if you don't follow all these above rules, uh, rules, you shall get many, many lashes of electric wire. Number 10, if you disobey any point of my regulations, you shall get either 10 lashes or 5 shocks of electric discharge. At least it's electric discharge. But anyway. Well, that's, <laughs> well, that seems that quite sounds, terrible. I was going to say, that, that sounds like it was um, definitely haunted. Meant to be. Uh, meant to be haunted, put it that way. Like, that's amazing. It was, a, it was a mixture of. 
torture, torture, and death, and death. Yeah, torture, death, and just complete misery. Yeah, misery. Wow. So, if there isn't anything there, I'll be completely disappointed if we if we go for that one. Yeah, Cambodia. <laughs> oh, I ain't going to Cambodia. Fuck that. Why? You don't want to go to Cambodia. I'm not quite sure if I really want to go across the way. There's a lot of bad things that can happen to you there. Oh, yeah, but that's part of the fear. Uh, yeah, Cambodia just itself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so number one is what we're down to now, finally. The number Mines one. of Paris. Yeah. The History. The history. The seemingly infinite tunnels that run below the streets of Paris should not be confused with the catacombs of Paris. The infamous underground ossuary, although the mines are also mistakenly referred to as the catacombs, exploring the mines is illegal, and penalty penalties include heavy fines. The mines were used to dig out minerals from Paris. Uh, buried sediments and the loca locations where Paris is, is was submerged. Okay, so where Paris is now, it was submerged for millions of years prior to that. Okay. And the tunnels are what got left behind. That's cool. Oh, cool. So they're natural tunnels then. Yeah. Well. Well, sort of natural. And made-ish natural. Because they dug it, they dug it out. Yeah, but they said, "Well, okay, you dug it out, and then you're walking through like the million year history below you." Oh yeah, yeah, no doubt. So we have the terror, the terror, guys. I am afeard. You are afeard. I am afeard. <laughs> the mines are now unkempt, unpatrolled, and unsafe. As far as legends go, ancient cults and creatures patrol the depths. Spirits dwell in the infinite shadows, and if one wanderer deep enough, one wanders deep enough and survives, they may even enter Hades. Hades. Hades? Eh, no, it's not Hades. It's yes, okay. It Alright, Hades itself. <laughs> as far as reality goes. Hades. That's that sounds like, that sounds like a, a clothing line, doesn't it? Mm, a little bit. <laughs> Put men in there. Hades your way. Uh, as as far as reality goes, those legends can take a back seat. Ooh, the tunnels stretch for close to six hundred kilometers throughout wow. Par or throughout the Parisian. Parisian underground, and most of them are unmapped, saying it is easy to get lost. Uh, is an understatement. Oh, saying it's easy to get lost is an understatement. It is nearly impossible. <laughs> I heard that squeak. It is nearly impossible not to get lost. Many parts of the catacombs are hundreds of feet below sea level. Street, Some street level. Street. Oh, okay. It does say street level. Son of a bitch. I'm just going so fast. I'm like the Flash. I get tripped up. Some hallways are flooded and and or. Or, or are so narrow, narrow you have to crawl through them. There are holes that drop hundreds of feet and manholes that are unreachable, luring un unwary urban explorers in with false promise of freedom. The infinite underground maze absorbs sound, mutes it, makes it unlikely you will hear somebody yelling for help, even if they're not far away. Or, worse yet, making it unlikely somebody will hear you. Thousands of human bones litter the, the tunnels due to the overcrowding in many of Paris, Paris, Paris cemeteries. Weird paintings adorn the walls. Are, the, are they ancient? Are they new? Are they warnings or pleas for help? If you have claustrophobia, you will want to avoid the mines at all costs. If you don't have claustrophobia, you probably will, after a trip through the mines, bringing plenty of batteries, backup flashlights, clean water, a friend, and say a prayer before entering the mines of Paris. You will need them all. So, 
definitely going to be fun. You're up for that, huh? I'll do it. I know that you're probably not up for it. Well, I don't know. I, I think I would be up for it. I, I think I would. I think I would definitely use like a string. I would bring a sword. A sword and, <laughs> and a gun and I bring and a string. Thomas. I'd bring a string, tie it up. Like I wouldn't leave breadcrumbs because ghosts like breadcrumbs. Yeah, I've never seen a ghost that eats strings. That's for sure. Mm, you better believe it. They hate those things. Well, they trip be. on them all the time. Yeah. Well, I imagine that like there could be some people like living under there. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I wouldn't doubt it. Um, it ha it's they got people living underneath the uh, spillways there in uh, Las Vegas. Don't they have that them really home? crappy looking movie coming out <laughs> about the catacombs of Paris? Oh. Yeah, they do. And okay. it, looked, it looked really terrible. But hey, whatever. It might might be good. Might work. Might work. So I'll go see that at some point. <laughs> see, tell <laughs> well, you guys how it is when it hits Netflix. No, when it hits the theater. Oh bullshit! Although he says, "Hey man, we're going. I'm gonna go with you to watch this uh, Guardians of the Galaxy," and uh, you know what he does? Goes without me. I didn't mean to. Yeah, I was. Sure you I was bamboozled. I was bamboozled. Well, so that is all that we have for today. We'd like to thank you for watching. Like, subscribe if you like to, and. Even if you wouldn't like to, I mean, it'd be nice just for you to yeah. like it anyway. As long as you view it, uh, we would like it if you like to just pass it on, get your friends, your family to watch, and uh, definitely uh, give our email a, a jingle and let us know how we're doing. And uh, if you want to see something that we haven't shown yet, uh, if it's any good or within reason, we will definitely uh, choose it. Um, definitely comment on our backdrop. Yes, very. It, it'll change throughout throughout time, but fine we are very... linen cloth. <laughs> yeah, it's not Egyptian cotton. No, or silk. But it's it it, it keeps me warm. It's a sheet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sheet. So, we'll see you later. Good morning. Good afternoon. And good nights. I'm gonna <laughs> good night. I didn't mean to downstone them.